Downtown Heroes seems to be filmed a lot right here in Vigor Industrial Shipyard in Ketchikan, Alaska. We are here yet again for another historic event right here in Ketchikan, happening a lot lately. Now, I'm standing in between two keels that are being laid for the first ever Alaska ferries to be built in the state of Alaska. Now, the reason that these keels are here is that this is a public-private partnership in which the shipyard is working with the state to stay within budget and build high-quality Alaska-class ferries. One of the requirements, as you can see, these are quite large, one of the requirements of the contract and this partnership is that the contract is completed in phases, if you will. The first part of which is to have 30,000 pounds of steel laid before January 1st. So stay tuned. Our brand new governor is in town specifically for this event. It's another great community event celebrating everything that's Ketchikan. Gentlemen, historic day for Vigor Alaska right here in Ketchikan. The first time ever that a Alaska class ferry has been built in the state of Alaska. What does this mean for Ketchikan? Well, Michelle, uh, this is again another historic day for Ketchikan and it seems to be getting to be routine, but it seems like every time we have an event like this, it's a first. And like you said, again, this is the first time in history that a state ferry has been built by Alaskans in Alaska. So it's a great day. Uh, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, we've got reasonable weather. Everybody got into town today, so we're looking for a great event. Excellent. And Economically speaking, this is huge for Ketchikan as well. So talk to me a little bit about the ramifications for Ketchikan's job-wise and for our economy. Well, Ed Adam, uh, our president, uh, gave you the number of jobs. But I think it's important to note that the Ketchikan Shipyard project, project has been an economic development project since the middle of the 1970s. And uh, the building we're in today and the facilities that you see around the Ketchikan Shipyard today is a product of a lot of different people, the Alaska Congressional Delegation, the state legislature, uh, our local municipal governments, and a lot of businesses have put a lot of uh, hard sweat and effort into getting where we are today. Uh, we've got one of the best little shipyards in all of North America, and we think this is going to be the beginning of a long-term shipbuilding enterprise that's going to exist not only in Ketchikan, but benefit the entire state. Adam, you've got high hopes for job growth right here in Ketchikan. What do you think that'll translate into in the years to come? Well, what we really hope for is uh, about 80 to 90 new jobs. We think overall it can support as many as about 150. Some of those, of course, are existing employees. But what this really brings to us is it brings stability, and it's a four-year program. You know, predominantly our business in the past has been ship repair, and ship repair is very hard to predict and forecast. You have a lot of peaks and valleys, a lot of ups and downs, and particularly here in Ketchikan where all the vessels that we work on, they're out working in the summer, so it's been very difficult for us to, to have steady work in the summer, and this will bring us that. Uh, it also helps us to, to really refine our shipbuilding process and get more efficient, more productive, and allow us to compete for some of the upcoming work with the uh, recapitalization of the Alaska fishing fleet and certainly with the uh, with the offshore uh, oil and, and heavy minerals coming to to uh, Alaska and the, and the Arctic. Excellent. And the focus, quite frankly, has been growing these jobs locally as opposed to bringing in outside workers. And you've been a big part of that, Doug. So talk to me a little bit about what you've done to encourage local job growth. Well, uh, you know, it's been one of the purposes of the Ketchikan Shipyard was to uh, grow Alaska's business and industrial base and create new employment opportunities for Alaskans. And certainly Randy Johnson before and now with Vigor, we have a very uh, focused effort on recruiting not only Ketchikan residents from Southeast Alaska, but all over the state we're recruiting now. Uh, Adam is, uh, uh, right now we're tooling up. We've got partnerships with Ketchikan Indian Community, the University of Alaska Southeast Campus, uh, we have a uh, uh, program for career awareness at the high school, and we're calling it the uh, Pre-Vocational Apprentice Program for uh, youth. Uh, we'll be distributing that out over to Powtech over at Prince of Wales. In fact, even the Knack Knack Training Center has been in touch with us, and they want to see uh, what we're doing. So we're developing curriculum that can be transported all over the state, uh, and then uh, as school districts and things want to prepare their students for jobs, uh, they can send their students down here to participate in our career days and spend a little time in the shipyard, see if they want to make this their career. 
We think a lot of them will. You'll see that in our workforce today. We've got a very young, uh, mixed uh, uh, workforce with a lot of diversity in it, uh, which I think uh, is a strong reflection of the Walker Malat administration. You're going to see that. So we're all lined up with a new governor and uh, looking forward to building a whole bunch of new ships. Okay, so gentlemen, last question. You know, I, I think you have high hopes for growth in the state of Alaska. Um, give us a little indication as to what the shipyard might look like in the state of Alaska, maybe say five years from now. Well, I guess it depends on which shipyard. You know, uh, Vigor has two shipyards in the state of Alaska, both Seward and here in Ketchikan. Uh, we have we have high hopes for, for both of them. I think Ketchikan, uh, if we can get steady work, we can build this to, I think, uh, as much as 250, if not 300 jobs. And I think that would put us at about capacity. And, and Seward has the ability to be uh, upwards of 100, 100 jobs. So that's far and away uh, more than what we currently have. And there is so much opportunity on the horizon. So this is not just a build it and they will come. These opportunities are really there. And we're trying to position ourselves and get ready to be able to take advantage of them and put people to work. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations on another historic occasion right here in Ketchikan. Thank you, Michelle. Welcome to Ketchikan. This is awesome. A great day for Ketchikan. A great tell day me, for the state of Alaska. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So tell me a little bit about your role right now. I am currently acting commissioner of the Department of Commerce, and so we have been active in supporting this project. Former Commissioner Bell was instrumental in working with the administration to get this funded and going, and so I'm just here to enjoy the day. All right. So now this is also a historic uh, project from the way that uh, it was contracted as well. Yes, it's a public-private partnership, and I think it's building on that sense of cooperation in terms of carrying both Alaska forward public and privately. It's a nice partnership. Exactly, and I think that it's also historic in the fact that uh, we're building it for the first time right here in the state of Alaska, and that kind of public part private partnership, excuse me, that you were talking about um, is very interesting in the way that it wasn't just put out for bid necessarily. Right. It's, a, it's a true partnership. It is a true partnership and it's also a full value basis and I think whether you have 93 percent catch a can employment in this shipyard, that's what makes the wheels turn around in Alaska. Excellent. So what do you what do you foresee in terms of uh, economic development, in terms of having this project in Ketchikan? What is your hope? You know, there is a report out on building maritime infrastructure and capacity in Alaska. It came out of the Division of Economic Development. And this is part and parcel of that. Really, you're growing the capacity not just to do this project, but to do the next one and the next one and the next one after that, and to diversify from doing state ferries to doing replacing replacement fisheries boats. There's a big world out there and this is a chance to get our up our game, up our capacity and our ability to do it. All right, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, obviously today is about um, the shipyard and, and what it, you know what it's done for our economy and what it's done for um, um, for jobs here in Ketchikan and, and that's the story and, and I'm just glad to be here to be a part of that. Um, you know obviously looking forward to my upcoming session and being able to represent District 36 to the best of my abilities and, and um, you know it's gonna be a tough year. It's gonna be an uh, interesting year with uh, revenue being down um, but but you know I think, the, you know, I think the new governor's up to the challenge and I'm um, certainly up to the do my, my part and help to come so up with that's, a So that's actually a really good point you know you state revenues are down, uh, budgets are down, capital projects will more than likely be down as well. However, this is a huge boon for Ketchikan in terms of economic development. And I think that we'll, we're very poised to see a lot of growth in the future. What do you think about that? Yeah, there's no question about it. Um, you know, the fact that we can build these two uh, Alaska Marine Highway uh, ships here in Ketchikan, it's got to be a big plus, plus for our economy, big plus for jobs and for families here in the community. And, uh, and so you're right, while you know, overall the state uh, revenue forecast is not looking good, uh, this particular project here is, is going gonna, is gonna to mean a lot to uh, the folks here in Ketchikan and the Ketchikan economy, no doubt about it. Well, and I think that maritime industries are going to play a larger and larger role in the state moving forward as oil revenues uh, continue to decline. Uh, hopefully that will turn around in the future, but in the near future, this is a huge boon for Ketchikan and certainly signifies a lot of growth in the maritime industry. You bet, you bet, and I think, you know, uh, hats off to, uh, you know, the administration, uh, the outgoing administration um, for, uh, you know, getting this project down here in Ketchikan and uh, of course to the shipyard folks themselves for putting forward a competitive uh, a competitive bid so that uh, we could in fact get them down here and um, so yeah positive 
big plus overall, and today's just a good day. Newly elected Governor Bill Walker right here in Ketchikan. First appearance and welcome. Uh, give us a few thoughts about today's event. It's This is very exciting. You know, the first time I came to Ketchikan, I went through the Ketchikan, this, this facility. I was so inspired by it to come back and have this my first presentation as, as governor, my first public event here. It's, it's just very, very exciting. I, I just am so impressed with what happens in Ketchikan uh, and to be part of it in some small way. I'm going to give lots of credit to a whole lot of people that made this happen. I just have to be the person who is fortunate to be governor at this moment to be able to do this exciting on the, uh, on the lane of the keel of the, of the, of the day boat. That's awesome. Well, welcome, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a historic event. It will be. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So I want to thank everybody for coming today. Uh, once again, uh, we're here celebrating another first in the Ketchikan shipyard. It seems like that's getting to be pretty routine. And as our speakers begin to join us up here on the stage, our speakers begin to join us up here on the stage. <laughs> uh, I want to uh, recognize a few people that can't be here today. And of course, uh, the building you're sitting in is the module fabrication facility. Uh, that, this particular addition to the shipyard uh, was an appropriation that was uh, brought to Ketchikan with our favorite Senator Bert Stedman uh, several years ago and he apologizes he can't be here today but he's up in Girdwood where the Senate is meeting to uh, figure out who's going to be in leadership so he's in a good place we're glad he's up there uh, to represent Southeast Ketchikan. Uh, another uh, notable that can't make it today was Representative Peggy Wilson and she sent down a very nice letter that I was going to read, but I left it in my office. But it is a very nice letter, uh, and um, it was touching. And uh, Peggy wants both Peggy and Senator Stedman. They want to extend their greetings to Ketchikan and their apologies that they can't be here. Uh, others that we have in town uh, here today: Mayor Dennis Watson from Craig, manager of the IFA. There he is, right over there. So if anybody wants to talk about fares to Craig. Uh, we have uh, Acting uh, Commissioner Fred Faraday, uh, who is the Acting Commissioner of the Department of Commerce and Economic Development here today. We had a chance to meet him earlier, and uh, hopefully he'll be uh, staying on as uh, Commissioner. <laughs> uh, and we also have uh, our incoming uh, District 36 representative, uh, Dan Ortez, is with us. Dan, where are you out there? All right. Vice Mayor Glenn Thompson, I understand you might be in the audience. There's Vice Mayor Glenn Thompson. If you got a problem with your property taxes or anything else, go see Glenn. And uh, Mayor Lou Williams, where are you? Uh, Mayor, Mayor Lou Williams will be here any minute, uh, I'm sure. Uh, so, like I said, we're under a tight deadline today. I do want to thank you all for uh, coming here. and. Rather than delay this and get in trouble with the governor's scheduler, let's start off right off with our blessing of the vessel with Father Scott Satissimo with the Holy Name Parish. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The psalmist wrote, Some go down to the went down to the sea in ships, doing business upon the great waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted, lifted the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven, they went down to the depths, their courage melted away. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Let us pray. Be attentive, O Lord, to our supplications, and bless these keels and the ships to be constructed thereupon, and the men who will be building them, and those who will, men and women who will be sailing aboard them. As you bless Noah's Ark in a deluge, stretch forth your hand to them, O Lord, as you reached out to Peter 
when he walked upon the sea. Send your holy angel from heaven to watch over them and those on board. Keep them safe at all times from every disaster. And when threatened perils have been removed, comfort your servants with calm voyages and arrival at the harbors they desire. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much, Father. And uh, in looking for forgiveness, I did forget a couple of names. I do want to recognize uh, our much esteemed uh, past representative, Bill Williams, is out in the audience. Uh, there he is, Mr. Bill. <laughs> Don't forget Brother Joe down here in the front row. <laughs> so, uh, so our next speaker uh, has had longevity on the Marine Transportation Advisory Board, been very active in Southeast Alaska commerce and industry and politics, uh, been a support staff to the Southeast Conference for many years. And probably, I'm gonna just say it tonight, and we don't know the numbers, I talked to him this morning, we tried to figure it out, but probably the longest running Marine Transportation Advisory Board in the history of the board, Mr. Robert Venables. Thank you, Doug. Governor, Mrs. Walker, and distinguished guests, it's with much excitement and great pride that we're here today on this historic event. And the Marine Transportation Advisory Board was created in very similar times between administrative changes about 12 years ago and, and Southeast Conference, uh, which was formed about 53 years ago to create the Marine Highway System working through the transition team and community uh, participation, identified uh, a need and role for such a board to play that was created by executive order and then put into statute. And it's really an ex extension of the collaboration that uh, we see in the community and in the region, but across the state, we have uh, municipal leaders, uh, mayors from Unalaska, Kodiak, Cordova, tribal uh, leaders uh, such as Mr. Jerry Hope, who's with me today, my board member here, and uh, Maxine Thompson from Angoon. We have business leaders uh, from Ketchikan through Upper Anchorage and Prince William Sound, and, the, and a Rear Admiral to boot uh, that adds us a lot of expertise to, to help guide the input that we receive from communities and work collaboratively so that as we, as we did in the beginning with um, with a, with a need for collaboration and facing great fiscal uncertainty at that time. Uh, today, I think uh, we have such uh, hope and expectations that regardless of the fiscal challenges that we have, uh, there, there, is, there is hope for uh, great success through collaboration. And I think uh, we want to salute everyone uh, that has played a role in that, from our former legislators that have been have mentioned, um, and to each, each one gathered uh, here and throughout the region. So. Um, I, I applaud and, uh, and thank you all for the continued efforts. The administration um, has really worked hand in hand with the Marine Transportation Advisory Board and allowed us to play a role uh, and to the fact um, where you know, we, uh, we were engaged in how, to pro how to, should we procure this thing. And I think it was a very unique opportunity. And so we've seen uh, the willingness to stretch out and think beyond our horizons. And I think that um, we embark on a new era today, and um, I thank you for that and wish us all great success. Over the years, he's been more than just a landlord and a mentor on, on how we do economic development in the state. Uh, he has also become a very close and personal friend of mine. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce Mr. Ted Leonard. Thank you, Doug. I am honored to be here today, and I would like to acknowledge uh, that we have our chair, board chair, Dana Pruse here. Dana, if you'd just raise your hand. Thank you. Both uh, Chair Pruse and Commissioner Parody are representing Ada and the board for the laying of the keels. I'd like to thank Governor Walker, the First Lady, Mrs. Walker, for attending this celebration for this major milestone for the shipyard and its employers, employees. Governor, we look forward to working with you in the future to expand the shipyard 
to make it a larger world-class shipyard and also to support your efforts as you grow the economic development of the state of Alaska in the future. Here in Ketchikan, Ada's partnership with Digger, the borough, the city, and the state has created a world-class shipyard and a dynamic economic and job creation engine for the region and the state. The work in, that happens here brings tremendous economic benefit not only to Ketchikan, but to all of Alaska. Several years ago, we celebrated the building of the Chevron Legacy, the first steel marine vessel manufactured in Alaska. Then more recently, Vigor Alaska completed the Arctic Prowler, the first large-scale commissioner commercial fishing vessel built in Alaska. And now here we are today, celebrating the laying of the keels for the first state ferries to be built in Alaska. Ada is very proud to be a partner in these efforts that have produced such positive results for this community and Alaska. On behalf of Ada's board, its management, and its staff, we would like to offer our congratulations to Vigor, its talented employees, and the citizens of Ketchikan for this major milestone for Ketchikan and for Alaska. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ted. Well, that takes care of the landlord. Uh, now we've got to deal with the owner of the new vessels. Uh, and again, over the years, it's been my pleasure and honor uh, to work with not only Marine Highway System, but the Alaska Department of Transportation and Public Facility, uh, who um, Commissioner Kemp uh, extends his apologies. He can't make it today. but who a very capable person who's able to, to fill in in a great way and has also become somewhat of a friend. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Deputy Commissioner Ruben Yost, who's had a lot to do with these ferries being built right here today. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here today to see the Alaska class ferries get to this point with actual steel sh taking shape on the ground. But these are not only new ships, they represent a new concept for the Alaska Marine Highway System. Large capacity, conventional speed day boats. I'd like to take a few minutes to put this into perspective and also to acknowledge some of the key players that made this happen. Over the past 20 years, the state has spent the equivalent in today's dollars of over $200 million for the four newest uh, ships in the AMHS fleet. That was $200 million that came to the state in, in the form of federal aid, was matched by approximately $20 million in state funds, and then immediately turned around and left the state. The only jobs for Alaskans were the few AMHS staff who had to move to Mississippi, Louisiana, or Connecticut to oversee construction. To turn that around, we needed a shipyard capable of building an AMHS vessel in Alaska, and we needed state dollars so that Alaska construction could be mandated um, for this project. We have that today, but with only one shipyard, we also needed a different way of contracting for a vessel other than by competitive bid. That's where the process of construction manager, general contractor, or known as CMGC, came into play. Under this method, the shipyard works with the state and the design team from the very beginning throughout the design process so that all the cost elements are on the table and they're transparent. That way the state knows what the shipyard's costs are and that we can be confident we are paying a fair price without going through the competitive low bid process. The problem was that this has never been done in the United States for a, for a vessel procurement. So the department turned to Dave Kemp. He's with us here today. Dave, can you raise your hand? Thank you. Uh, Dave Kemp, who is the DOT facilities chief, and Dave working with Matt Tanaka, a senior facilities project manager, who's also here today, Doug Miller, the AMHS project manager, and Alan Coffin, the Vigor Alaska project manager, and together they created the first ever vessel GMC, uh, GMGC contract. Of course, attorneys were involved, 
as were bidding, bonding companies, uh, risk managers for the state. But these four individuals uh, uh, had a great share and deserve a great part of the credit uh, for this work. So I want to acknowledge that here today. The Alaska class ferries represent an important step for the economy of Ketchikan and the state in terms of construction jobs and related dollars, but they also represent a very important change uh, for the AMHS. Over the next 50 years when these vessels go into service, they are estimated to reduce the annual operating cost to the AMHS by approximately $5 million. That's a savings of more than twice their, their uh, total construction cost. Operating costs are always an issue, but in the next coming years, they're going to be an even greater <coughs> issue, and uh, these vessels represent a small light at the end of a four-year tunnel. The dayboat ACFs, with their drive-through bows, increased maneuverability for quick turnarounds, and synchronized operation for transfers and hanes, represent a significant change in AMHS operations, and it'll be a change for northern southeast users. Change is seldom easy, especially when it occurs over a short period of time. But with vessels, your biggest opportunity for change is when you build a new one. MTAB was instrumental in working with DOT to help us identify concerns and to communicate solutions. Jeremy Woodrow, who is with us here today, the DOT communication officer, organized two different public comment periods, assisted with uh, somewhat contentious public meetings in Haines, Skagway, and Juneau, and fielded numerous media inquiries. Last but not least, on the engineering side of things, Cisco Flores, the AMHS engineering manager, assembled a steering committee of AMHS shoreside and ship employees to ensure we had a functional design. Elliott Bay Design Group, represented today by its president, Joe Pritting, captured all of the required elements in the design so that we would have the functions we wanted and the cost savings we need. And last but not least, I'd like to acknowledge the efforts of Captain Falvey, the general manager, who's also the contracting officer. He kept the, all these elements in motion for the life of the project while also managing and keeping the system running. So again, many thanks to these individuals and everyone who got us to this point. We are seeing history made here in Ketchikan, and this may just be the beginning. Perhaps other AMHS vessels will be constructed here. We may be able to follow the example of Washington State, where the ships are built in state with the hulls and superstructure paid for with state dollars, and federal funds are used to procure equipment and outfittings by competitive bid. At the very least, the elements already put in place that we can see today may make many years of future AMHS vessel construction in Ketchikan a real possibility. Thank you very much. Well, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, so I'm going to take the uh, opening here and introduce a few people um, uh, that have shown up since then. One that often doesn't get recognized was really one of the founders of the shipyard, uh, came up with the, one of the early uh, uh, economists around town that worked on the initial shipyard planning back in the 1970s, Mr. Kent Miller. I see he just walked in. Uh, we owe Big Kent a big round of applause <laughs> for having a ship here at all. Um, a couple other people, you know, who are going to build our ships? Well, we're here to have Alaskans build those ships. And we have some of our training providers here today. Priscilla Schulte, director of the University of Alaska Southeast Ketchikan campus. Priscilla, thank you. Uh, we have Ms. Sonia Scan, who is our training coordinator for Ketchikan Indian Community. And, and then some of us uh, that uh, work here, have a support staff too. Nicole Hollingsworth is wife of our general manager, Mike Pearson. Nicole, would you stand up? Oh, come on. Go on. And of course, on my side of the fence, uh, uh, Ms. Rosie Ropel. I see she got up and ran off, uh, but uh, a big hand for Rosie. She's put up with me 20 plus years to do this. 
So like I said earlier, it just seems like uh, this business, I don't know, maybe it's shipbuilding, maybe it's Ketchikan, maybe it's the state of Alaska, but it seems like we all make a lot of friends in this state, and uh, that even extends to my boss, President of Vigor Alaska, Mr. Adam Beck. Uh, please uh, take the stage. Well, good afternoon, Ketchikan. Governor Walker, Mrs. Walker. Uh, and especially for those of you that brave the weather to, to make it here today. Today certainly marks another milestone in the Ketchikan shipyard. Uh, Vigor's certainly not the first to undertake a shipbuilding here in the region. Uh, shipbuilding dates back to the early 1900s. And whereas the past is certainly important to recognize and honor, uh, today is about the future. Today brings, uh, begins a new era in shipbuilding in Ketchikan. And we're here to celebrate the beginning of life of the two uh, Alaska Marine Highway System fast ferries to ever be built in Alaska by our hardworking, highly motivated, and skilled Alaskans. Uh, before I go on with my remarks, I want to recognize a few folks that have really gotten us here today. Uh, Alan Coffin, where are you, Alan? There he is. Alan, stand up, please. Uh, Alan has worked just absolutely tirelessly for the last two years working with, this, with the state single-handedly and with, with a, a few folks on his staff has estimated this job and really gotten us to the point that we are today. And Alan, my hat off to you, sir, if I had one. Thank you. <laughs> one other person that I want to recognize, and I think it's, uh, uh, he, he's always the one that's recognize, uh, recognizing others, and I don't think it's enough recognition for what he does, uh, and that's Mr. Doug Ward, who is also a big reason of why we're here today, not only for the facility, but the contract. So Doug, thank you. There's been a lot of stakeholders in the past, all of which, with, if it weren't for their efforts, we wouldn't be here today. Uh, guys like John Murphy, Steve Seeley, Randy Johnson, and some of the pioneers that really brought this facility to what it is and through, worked through very difficult climates and, and arguably in a time of a failing economy. Uh, but through, through great risks that they took, they've given us the foundation to be able to build what we're about to build. You know, in the past, just about every governor since back to Governor Hickel has supported the shipyard in one way or another. And of most recently, I do want to recognize Governor Sean Parnell for his efforts. Governor Parnell defederalized the, uh, this ferry program to give uh, Ketchikan and Alaskans an opportunity to build those in Alaska. I also want to thank our Alaska congressional delegation, our district and state legislatures, and the city of Borough and Ketchikan, who have maintained support for this shipyard throughout the generations. <clears throat> uh, they've arguably uh, and worked tirelessly to give us this facility that, that we have. Uh, a few folks that I'd like to recognize, uh, you know, you're sitting in a building here that without the efforts of Senator Burt Stedman, I don't think we would have today. I know Senator can't be here today, but uh, I think we should recognize him anyways because he's, he's been a huge supporter and the reason why we're here. So. And I know Representative Williams, he, he's also a, a very key part of that. He's here with us today as Doug Wrench, and I think we should give Bill another round of applause. Thank you. Bill. You know, just like the shipyard, it's been developed with a public-private uh, partnership. And what are now known as hulls 135 and 136, or the program, the Alaska Class Day Boats, um, this, this project and this program is a public-private relationship. Uh, as Deputy Commissioner Yost mentioned, he talked about the CMGC process. Uh, the part that he didn't talk about is how uh, Commissioner, Acting Commissioner Kemp, Deputy Commissioner Yost, and the, the folks on the DOT staff, how difficult the task it was to take a, a procurement process that's been used uh, for the vertical building world and, and roads and bridges and try to convert that into the marine industry. Um, it took a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, but it really allowed us to work collectively and collaboratively, not only with the state, but with the state's designers, Elliott Bay Design Group. Uh, and what it's done is it's got us to a point where we're entering into a contract with a lot more confidence, a lot more comfort, much better understanding of what's in front of us and with the, the ultimate outcome of being on time and on budget. So. Thank you, everyone. Now, in addition to the beginning of life of new ferries, what this project does is it brings four years of stable work to Ketchikan and to the Ketchikan shipyard. 
Um, this allows us to build our workforce, to build our efficiencies, our productivity, and positions us to be competitive for the next opportunities that are coming as we look to recapitalize the Alaska fishing industry, as well as the, uh, what's on the horizon with the, the oil and mineral gas for the, uh, for the offshore drilling. Um, we look forward to, to a day when we're building these ships and when the workforce of Ketch Can can proudly stamp on those made in Alaska. Um, I'd like to take a quick moment to introduce our ship's sponsors, uh, First Lady Donna Walker. Uh, and our other sponsor, uh, Mrs. Antoinette Mary Malott, who unfortunately can't be here today, but sends her regards. Uh, Mrs. Walker, welcome to the Ketch Can Shipyard, and thank you for helping us give life to this next generation of ferries. Before I conclude, I want to recognize the most important component uh, that's here with us today, and that's the Ketch Can Shipyard workforce. The work ethic and refusal to accept anything but success in applying these qualities to both shipbuilding and repairing ships is truly the lifeblood of this facility. They first learned how to build and fix ships in the mud, the wind, the rain, and the snow. Even today, you can walk around and see much of our work continues outdoors. Uh, but these folks work tirelessly, every day to ensure these jobs and those of their sons and daughters will continue on. Uh, thank you to our workers. We wouldn't be here today without you. <clears throat> Lastly, and certainly not least, there's been a lot of things, a lot of firsts in this shipyard, uh, and it is my sincere honor to introduce to the Ketchikan shipyard and the community of Ketchikan for his first time, the governor of the great state of Alaska, Mr. Bill Walker. It is so great to be back in Ketchikan. I so remember the first day I came to Ketchikan some years ago, this is the first place I stopped. Out in a NATCO unit, met the gentleman by the name of Randy Johnson, Doug Ward, wherever Doug's gone, and I took my first tour of this facility. I felt I had, I had rediscovered Alaska. I, I, I went to a Chamber of Commerce meeting, the, the room was packed. I thought I'd rediscovered Alaska. I, it, I had not seen this elsewhere in Alaska, this kind of passion, this kind of, you know, we can do it, we can, we can build something. I'm a, I, am a, I come from a building background. I love to see things built. I usually build houses. I don't, I've not built ships. I'm so, so honored to be part of this, a small part of this. You know, I'm the, the, the fortunate one that comes in after all the hard work is done to get us to where we are today. And I'm glad that you, that you acknowledge Governor Sean Parnell. He certainly receives an honor and acknowledgement for this. His name also will be uh, etched on one of the keels, his initials, and I'm, glad, I'm, and I'm pleased with that. I will, I will make sure I cont continue to convey that to him as I see him. My wife Donna, she and I met soon after the building of the oil pipeline. I didn't know she could weld. I guess we'll find out today that she can weld. So she, well, she welds her, her initials into that. You know, I, it's so exciting for me to be in an, uh, a setting that is not talking about the price of oil. Um, I've been governor for about 12 days now, and every day has been a briefing about the price of oil, and it's not been a positive thing, but this is very positive. We must remember when, when Alaska issued a $12 million or $19 million bond issue to buy the Alaska Marine Highway System in 1959, the price of oil was zero. That was before statehood. So here we are now celebrating something that we're building in Alaska. I said throughout the campaign that if we could do in Alaska what is going on in Ketchikan, what a great state we would have. You're actually building things in Alaska. My favorite logo on a, on a, a sweatshirt or t-shirt is, is, is made in Alaska. We now have a made in Ketchikan. I congratulate you on what you, on what you have done what you're about to do. I'm so glad to be just a, a small part of this. You know, I believe Alaska is a great state because of people with vision. It takes more than vision. You have to have the guts to follow your vision. Governor Hickel 
was a large part of why I'm standing here today. He had a vision for Alaska. One of the advantages of, of running for governor is you get to travel the state and meet a lot of people. I met a lot of visionaries. I met some very, very bright people here in Ketchikan. But it's, again, it's not just the vision. It's the passion and then the guts to do something. Take a bold step forward. Someone took a bold step forward in this facility. My favorite part about touring this facility is I would have a chance to talk to some of the workers. And I liked so much, I talked to a young lady, she lifted up her welding helmet, and I said, where are you from? She said, I was born in Ketchikan. Another, another worker, a young man, the same, the same question, and where are you from? I was born in Ketchikan. You don't find that around, the, around this great state of ours. That's an anomaly. You are really doing something very special here. I planned, I have used Ketchikan as an example, and I've used this shipyard as an example to get me to where I am today. We will continue to use that model that you have here with vision, with guts, with passion, and we can get it done attitude to grow this great state. You know, the price of oil doesn't determine who we are. It's the spirit that we have within us that determines who we are. So we will watch the price of oil on a daily basis, like so many people in my administration help me watch that on a daily basis, and that's, that's very important. But they can't change, the price of oil cannot change the, the, the spirit of Alaska. And the spirit of Alaska is what did this today, and cause this to happen, and it's going to grow us in the next four years. I look forward to be part of that, and I so applaud you in being part of this great journey that, that Alaska is on. Thank you so much. So a lot of firsts, and I think this might be the first time in history that we'll ever have uh, the governor of Alaska in his first two weeks of office uh, be down to visit the Ketchikan shipyard. So, Governor, thank you so much. We know you've got a lot of work to do, and we appreciate you coming to share this moment with us in Ketchikan. Now, the purpose for which we're here today uh, to bring life onto the boat, and that responsibility uh, rests on First Lady Donna Walker's shoulder. And as usual, uh, we always save a surprise. We didn't tell the First Lady what we had in mind for her, but we're gonna turn here into a first-class welder this morning, and she's gonna weld her initials onto a piece of steel that goes onto the ship. So uh, First Lady, if you would join me here at the podium, uh, I'm gonna introduce you to your welding instructor, Mr. Eugene Doyon. Come on up, Eugene. Uh, Now, uh, Eugene, when you get it, by the way, the keel of the vessel are these structures right behind here. These are not dinosaur bones. Uh, those are the uh, bulbous bow of the vessel. Uh, Eugene has done a lot of the welds on those, and uh, he's also born in Ketchikan, and uh, friends of some of uh, Marine Highway System's uh, sons and daughters. So this truly is a family event going on. And he's going to go back and uh, uh, teach First Lady Walker how to weld her initials onto the keel of the boat, so First Lady, please. Uh, use it. Well, how about that? She, she cut out the whole state of Alaska. Yes, I've come a long way since the eighth grade shop, so that's pretty good. But I did just want to say what an honor it is to have as one of my first official duties to be able to do this and to, uh, I guess I understand that I will be invited back in a few years to christen uh, the new vessel. and. It's just an incredible honor. Um, I also wanted to vouch for Bill. He does go throughout the state telling everybody about what's going on here in Ketchikan and this Made in Alaska enterprise that I know you're so proud of and he is as well. We um, love Ketchikan. I've actually have had a couple of opportunities to go through the shipyard myself with Bill. He's been down more, more times than I have, but to see some of these workers in these really harsh conditions that I know I could not uh, withstand and to you know just see all of the excitement and all the good work going on here. Uh, we have many good friends here in Ketchikan. We love Ketchikan and we will look for every opportunity to return. Thank you so much for this honor. I'll, I'll first say one more thing. Uh, so in addition to having the uh, initials welded into the vessel, uh, we also uh, had another Made in Alaska product, uh, but here on good old Southeast Alaska, 
the yellow cedar, we have developed plaques uh, for Mr. Dave Zengi, who has an awesome advanced laser cutter that engraved uh, these plaques commemorating this moment, moment. They'll go on both ships, uh, both sponsors, and some of the owners and things will get these plaques. So thank you very much, all. Thank you, thank you First Lady. Take, with you. take that with you. Thank you, Governor. And those who want to have a participate in tours, uh, where's our tour guides? Shipyard workers, Sarah, come on up here. Uh, so you tour guides, why don't you come on up to the front of the uh, uh, stage here, and those who want to get a tour, grab one of them, and we'll get on a quick tour. Again, thank you for all, all of you coming today. Governor, speakers, thank you all. This contracting process has never been done before. And kind of a brief explanation as to how that all works. Um, yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's never been done before in a marine application, namely building a ship, okay? A state DOT has, has done the CMGC, the Construction Manager General Contracting Procurement Method with uh, buildings, roads, you know, vertical buildings, roads. Crime Lab was recently built with the CMGC. And uh, we, we looked at that as, uh, as an opportunity to uh, uh, potentially get innovative and uh, make an attempt at, at that uh, sort of procurement method for a marine application. So so we, we broke ground in this country uh, as far as CMGC goes. Well, and there were some other things that were taken into account because originally it was going to be one ship right. and then the plans changed. Right, yeah. We we had, uh, uh, you know, originally planned for a, uh, a much larger ship, one ship. Uh, the price slowly but surely uh, grew uh, away from the original 120 million that we had. Uh, when we uh, when we stopped the process of the big ship, we were uh, well into the 170 million dollar range. Um, governor Pornell, who was governor at the time, uh, um, had us re redirect uh, uh, that that project to the two smaller ships. Now I will say that uh, um, that 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 uh, that work was not lost. We spent about three and a half million dollars getting to that point. Uh, we, we, we do have the design to a point that uh, that design is archived and the uh, state of Alaska owns uh, you know you know owns all that design so it was not lost we've got it if we were to ever uh, you know need it again and then we restarted with the two smaller ships excellent the now ones. these two smaller ships as you were saying the other day at the Chamber of Commerce are going to be highly effective for the areas in which they're going to be used correct right, right. we we uh, will be using these ships in North Lincoln Canal running between Juno and Haines and then one of the ships will shuttle between uh, Haines and Skagway okay now you were describing the other day a certain process almost like an Alaska Airlines boarding process Right. Tell folks a little bit about that. Well, what we're looking at is uh, running these ships as day vessels because they don't have overnight cabins for, um, you know, large crews to work 24-7 on the ships. So we'll be running them um, on a 12-hour on a schedule. And what we will do is uh, we will, um, in, 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 the, in, the, in the early hour morning, uh, you know, with our, with our night crews, we will, you know, do all the um, startup inspections, get the engines ready. We will be boarding the passengers. Uh, and when the crew comes aboard, then the ship will be ready to sail. Uh, and, and that's when their 12-hour time clock will start, and that will allow us to uh, succeed with the 12-hour day. Now, there were some design differences that uh, were made, or some changes that were made, uh, in order to make these ships uh, be a little smoother in the water, if you will. Tell us a little bit about those. Right. Well, the mainline ships that we operate now, um, for the most part, uh, they have side doors on the on the on the forward, the front part of the uh, of the ships. And to support those side doors, you have uh, sponsons, as you, as you can see uh, on the Lacani here. And those sponsons tend to create slamming in the seaway. It's a it's an appendage that comes out horizontally. And what we've done is we have uh, engineered the side doors. Uh, this vessel also has a bow and a stern door aft so we could eliminate the sponsons which will create a much more seaworthy vessel and not not uh, you know give the ship the opportunity to slam in a heavy seaway we we you know of course design the hulls with computers um, uh, computer modeling and whatnot GHS modeling and then we take you know that hull form which 
very, very important to keep the whole, what we call, slippery in the business. Uh, um, you know, moving through the water, you know, very efficiently, uh, slipstream off the propellers and whatnot. And then we model test, and we did that uh, overseas in uh, Norway. And it's done with a uh, about a 25-foot model in an Olympic-sized swimming pool with a tremendous amount of data that comes off the model, and uh, we can uh, we can predict how the ship will will uh, run in, in in various sea conditions, how efficient we think it can be, things like that. So we. We have a very, very efficient haul with these new ships also. So now the process for actually building these ships is one that is done, if I understood correctly, it's going to be done in phases. Now the reason that the laying of the keels is done today was that there was a certain amount of steel that needed to be laid prior to January 1st. Could you describe some of the other phases in the building process? Well, first of all, the reason why we were moving so quickly to lay these, these two keels here today is uh, due to EPA, what we call a, a engine tier emission uh, a, a ratings. Um, the, the EPA is slowly uh, requiring um, engines to burn cleaner and the, the the engines that we have purchased and we've we've purchased uh, we purchased four engines now these are uh, EPA tier 3 rated engines now to purchase the engines uh, is is less than a tier 4 engine and to operate the engines over the life of a 30 or 40 or 50 year ship uh, because of the um, filtration that you need in the in the uh, tier, in the tier 4 engines it, it saves the state a lot of money so for EPA rules and regulations, we had to lay both of these keels, and uh, you know, part of these keels will be called the bulbous bow. Um, the EPA required that uh, each each structure weigh 33,000 pounds, and we got to this point before January 1st because the engines are purchased, we have them, they're paid for, and we needed uh, to quickly get to this point, and we've su if succeeded with that. Fantastic. Yeah. So what do you consider the biggest triumph of, of this program? I mean, there's several, but you have been intimately involved with this from the get-go. What's been the biggest triumph, do you think, or that or that biggest surprising moment in this whole process? Well, as the contracting officer, of course, I'm, I'm the general manager of the Marine Highway System, and I'm, I'm the fellow that uh, makes the place go every day. Um, and, and there was a, a lot of players that uh, mentioned today. Uh, my job was to uh, coordinate with them and to see that we got to a point where we had a contract that the state could agree to. Of course, Vigor Alaska, they, they had to be sure that they could agree to the contract, that the delivery dates were uh, appropriate for the, for the state and, and the bottom line price. And uh, that was my job to work with the team to get to that point and sign the contract. So it was a lot of challenges, but with the construction manager general contract type method, it allows us to work in the very early stages with Vigor Shipyard, with Elliott Bay Design Group, they're our Naval Architect Marine Engineering Group, uh, you know, for the last year to a year and a half to get to a point where we we really feel that most of the surprises in the construction of these two ships, most of the risk that would be uh, inherent in building two ships of uh, you know 101.3 million dollars because that was in essence the construction cost, not including design and a few other things, was. Uh, was correct. Um, very frequently when you um, procure something this large and this expensive uh, with a sealed bid type of uh, procurement, um, you can get into uh, a low, low bidding and then you can get halfway through the project and get into cost, cost overruns because of, quote, surprises. You can uh, get into um, um, you know legal situations be, because of those surprises. and. The beauty of the CMGC is working with the designer, working with Vigor Shipyard and, and the state and, 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 and my team, we are able to hopefully uh, get out ahead and around those surprises. Every shipyard in this country could do things differently. This shipyard uh, might bend steel differently. This shipyard has the ability to build these modules inside this building. Others may not. Um, so you play and you, you contract to the advantage of the shipyard, and you have that with CMGC. You don't have that when you're just uh, putting out a sealed bid to any number of contractors or vendors or shipyards in the United States. So. Uh, it's 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 innovative. We 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 think and and feel very confident it's going to work. Built to deliver on time and 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 of course on budget. Well, thank you very much for sure. your time. Sure, thank you. You have been around 
this shipyard for a very long time. You're yeah. deeply familiar with it. Take me back several years to what it used to be like, because right now we are standing in the middle of a state-of-the-art facility. Well, my experience goes back prior to appropriations uh, coming in for the yard in the early 80s while I worked at the department. Then as commissioner of the department under Steve Cooper, those were the first four years of operations. Uh, we had, I think, Mr. Murphy and uh, Steve Seeley, and uh, th there were challenges. Uh, there w the investment wasn't enough, the equipment wasn't here, the experience wasn't there with the operators uh, as it is today. And my next involvement was after being commissioner, after the yard had shut down. And Ada, the landlord, uh, hired myself and another gentleman, former Marine Highway director, to come in and uh, assess the uh, physical condition of the yard and do a feasibility study on whether it could be reopened and operated uh, in a financially viable way. And of course, we concluded it could, and, and I think the proof is here today. The, the scene that never has escaped uh, my memory is uh, uh, all I could think of was um, uh, out of the movie Adromeda Stream, because we came into the yard and it looked like the people that had been here didn't walk off, that they just vanished because there were pieces of equipment like forklifts stopped in the middle of the dry dock, haphazard, uh, tools laying around, haphazard, uh, an alarm going off in the dry dock that uh, was very eerie because there's no one around. The only thing missing was a dog walking in between it all. <laughs> and it really had that feel. And then to come here right now and see the work that's here, Lacani, the Kennecott, the overhaul work, and now these two new vessels being built in Alaska, it's pretty stunning. And that's been in a span of 25 to 30 years. It really is.